Let me make something loud and clear. I know your bias mental may be telling you Myron Reed won't be the greatest of all time. You play with fire and now your ass is gonna get burnt. But in years to come, everyone will be celebrating the name Hot Fire Myron Reed. And that's on my mama. Wrestling world has come accustomed to fire, literally and figuratively. Today, I'm with a very special guest, one of the greatest athletes to come from Louisville since Ali knocked out Sonny Liston. I'm saying we are here with the fireman. We are here with the MLW World Middleweight oh, Champion. Man. He's known as Hot Fire, my Reed. What's up, bro? What's going How's on? How's it going? How are you? Yeah, it's crazy. I'm glad to be on here. It's been I a minute. It. Yeah, yeah, I definitely have one. How are you on the channel for a long time now? So I'm glad we finally made it happen. Yes, sir. We made it. Going into it, I noticed on Twitter, you always talk about your early morning workouts, how you're up at five in the morning, always trying to get it in. So today, yeah, this morning, did you make it to the gym? And if you did, I went the work? last three days. No, sir. I took the rest day today, man. I went ah. and I went uh, Monday, Sunday for sure. And then I went Saturday. I did cardio Saturday, but like I went like three days in a row. I don't want to go too crazy, like seven days and fuck something up, you know, mess my, <laughs> my, mess my body up. Yeah, yeah, you definitely you don't need that in your life. That would that kind of would uh, hurt your future match coming up because you know you gotta face Leo Rush for the MLW World uh -huh. Middleweight Championships gonna be on January oh, yeah. at uh Kings yep. of Coliseum. So what, for your title title reign so far, everyone's been stepping up to you trying to get a title shot, but this time you called out Leo Rush. Why was Leo a different opponent from the other ones? And do you think he's gonna be your biggest challenge coming up? Definitely, definitely think he's gonna be the biggest challenge, but I also feel like this is gonna be the biggest match for him. Cause I feel like a lot of people don't know about the kid yet, and I just feel like I'm just I'm 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 gonna prove that shit. The belt just adds more stature to the match. It's already a huge match. The belt's gonna make it even more interesting. I just wanna let people know that you know I'm not here just to defend that belt against whoever they want me to fight. I'm gonna fight who I want to fight. Okay. The best. You feel me? Like Leo's one of the best. One of the people I looked up to when I first started. And now I'm on a, I'm on a tour where I'm like, I'm, I'm turning all my idols into rivals. That's a good one. Yeah. You actually are from Louisville, like I said earlier. So is there any athletes from Louisville that's actually inspired your career? Because I know there's a lot of famous wrestlers from Kentucky itself, but also from Louisville as well. Damn, uh, just thinking about that, like, because there's a lot of, like, as far as, like, just sports and, like, people that's made it to, like, a national level, like, you know, guys that play for the basketball team, like, T. Will, guys went overseas, like, Edgar Sosa, all those guys and shit like that. But, like, when you think about it, I'm thinking about like what people inspire me. I want to inspire people to where I'm bigger than just one place. You know what I mean? Like I'm bigger than just, you know, the guy that came from Louisville. I want to be worldwide. And, you know, Muhammad Ali was one of those people that I definitely look up to because he just was doing stuff that was completely different than anybody else. You know, he was, he wasn't just turning over for a dollar. You know what I mean? He was, he was fighting for what he believed in. And I, that's true. That's the, that's, that's what's every, that's what everything's about. Real, real. You got into wrestling actually because your grandmother got you into the sport. So what was like your earliest memory of pro wrestling growing up? Uh, I remember, I don't even know how old I was, man. I was probably like three, two, three. It was with my great grandma and she like, we were watching and I'm pretty sure we were watching. It was the Rock and Triple H. And I remember how much she was like cheering for him and stuff like that. And it, it just like from there, it just became something to where like if you find the people that you like. Yeah. And then you, you, you like 100% root for them. And it, it, it makes it like you're watching a basketball, football game. Like, it's, it's just how it was to me. And, like, after that, like, I was just like, I want to try to do this shit. <laughs> Even though they said don't try it at home, I'm like, I'm gonna, I want to try this at home. Yeah, well, it looks like you definitely were trying at home because you had, like, your own backyard wrestling promotion. So, like, uh, what was your sure. role in that promotion? Were you just, like, the, the wrestler, the world champion, or were you, like, running the whole thing? Uh, I was doing everything, bro. Like, I was, like... I would go to I would go to class, bro. I would speed and get my work done, and then I'll like cause we'll have computers, and I'll just like edit my videos. Like I was like finding any and every way to possibly get the videos done. I was like writing the script and everything, and like me and my, I mean the, me and the guys we like talked about what we wanted to do. But I was like legit writing it, and like it was cause at first it was just like you wrestle you, you wrestle, and you wrestle this guy, and do the fuck ever you want to do. But this guy's winning, he's winning that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it turned into like, all right, we going off script and shit. Like, and besides the promo, like, you know what you're talking about, but like, 
was like, this match is going to happen. You need to be like this much time. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, like, I seen some guys that, like, I was inspired by that were doing more than me on YouTube. And they went pro. So, like, I was like, all right, I know that I can do this shit. If they <laughs> turn their shit and they've done this and they've, you know, they're doing good with it, I know I can do this. So, like, I started looking for wrestling schools once I graduated high school. And I just got into it. It was, it was time. So, that's the rest is history. Well, it's like video creation and, like, content creation is something you're really interested in. Because, like, you don't see too many guys that start off, like, on YouTube and then turn their career on YouTube into, like, an actual pro wrestling career. So like was you doing YouTube like something you were just into or is that like your launch path for wrestling? Well, it, it was I was always into wrestling and I seen other people putting it on YouTube. I was like, shit, I want to do that. That's pretty dope. Because I always like I was always interested not only in what the wrestling was, but just like the editing and the the creation of the platform and the video or whatever. And I was just like, I was really inspired by that. So like that's what like that and the moves, of course. But like it made it made the moves and everything else just seem that much better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was there like a crazy like angle or storyline that you remember writing? Shit. Uh, me and my dude, Jack Andrews, bro, we had like the craziest feud. Like ours was like, he lived in like Columbus, Ohio. I lived in Louisville. And we would like, we had this beef, bro. Like he had his own promotion. I had mine. Like this, like it was lit, bro. <laughs> like, and, and I was just like, I hate this motherfucker. He's like, I hate, I hate him too. Like, and like the story was crazy. Like people, like we like really didn't like each other for a little bit, but like now we're like best <laughs> friends. But like we really didn't like each other when we were backyarding because it's like I don't know. It's it was just we both were two guys running our own shit and doing something with it. And he was like, "Nah, I'm the top guy." I was like, "No, sir, that's me." So like, we that was like that beef was crazy. Like for years, it was interesting with people. So that's why I like it's like one of my favorite. Did you guys ever run like your own like invasion storyline or anything like that? That's yeah, pretty much what it was. Okay. Like that's what started it all off, and then we just eventually joined together. Like, but like it was crazy. Yeah. Well, you end up turning that backyard career into an actual pro wrestling career. Then Definitely. now you're signed with MLW, and now you're a champion in MLW, which is great. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. But how did you actually end up? Oh yeah, no problem. How did you end up actually signing with MLW? Like, what's the story behind it? Uh, I was just I was like on my way out from Ohio because I moved there for a little over a year. And I was on my way out, I thought, you know, I learned what I learned, whatever stuff started to get chaotic a little bit. So I was like, you know, I'm just ready to go home and, and chill out. So I um, I was like, let me hit up some big promotions and see like, if I can like try and get myself a spot on. And I talked to MLW, so I was talking to uh, Evolve and stuff too at the time. I, I pretty much sent my resume and all that stuff to MLW and they were like, yeah, bro, we heard of you. You're you're dope. We're, we're fans. And I was like, bro, what? That's when I realized, bro, I was like, you just got to keep going hard because any you never know who's a fan, you know what I mean, who's watching you. For, like, upcoming wrestlers, like, what would you consider, like, a wrestling resume? Because I'm sure it's not, like, showing, like, what grocery store you worked at when you were saying. Oh, shit, bro. It's, it's more like who you are, what you've done, where you're from, your weight, all that stuff. You promo, like, pictures of yourself that they can use for their, their cover art, graphics, whatever the fuck they're doing. <laughs> and uh you you know you want to have like matches that show what you can do and like maybe a little cool highlight video like hey like this is what i do like, offensively but like here's matches that you could see where i'm dope at everything else type shit so for like fans that don't watch mlw why should they actually start getting into watching fusion every week if they want to but just having you know for whatever reason take that leap and actually start watching Bro, it's just like the <clears throat> like the underground and the other underground. Like, I never really thought I liked underground until I like watched MLW. You know what I mean? Before I was even on there, that's what made me message them. I was like, I was watching their show every week, and I was like, I like rock, watching Raw, SmackDown. I like watching NXT and fucking AW. But like, you know what I mean? MLW then and now, like they they just had that underground feel to them, and I was like, that's definitely somewhere I want to be. Like, I feel like I'm more of an underground type of person but like you know because i don't want to have to water my life down you know what i mean and fit in nowhere you seem to have like a pretty good relationship with uh court bauer the owner of mlw for anyone that doesn't know uh he actually praised you on twitter recently for having uh, amazing early morning workouts uh defending a middleweight towel against all comers and also standing up for social causes so what would you say your relationship is like with court and how he also treats like the other wrestlers at mlw well honestly man the relationship was like I knew, I knew nothing about court honestly it, 
at first, but I, I knew he ran MLW and stuff like that, but I'm like, I didn't know him personally. Yeah. And uh, I got signed on by, I think it was like MSL or somebody, and we made everything, like we did the contract stuff, and I never talked to Court, and I did like my first couple matches, he was like, you're killing it, keep doing it, and he's like, I need more character out of you, <laughs> need more character out of you. you, you're killing it in the ring, I need more character out of you, type stuff, and I was like, what do I need to do? And then, you know, we discussed, we discussed Injustice, bro. And like me, him, Jordan, Kodo, we discussed Injustice and we thought like, yeah, we can definitely make this something dope. And every, we saw people was like really liking it and we gained more confidence. We all like were doing something really well in some sort of category yeah. and the other was lacking in like, maybe Jordan wasn't like giving it his all in the ring, but Jordan like wanted to do promos and like, we were like, who gives a fuck about promos back then? So like, but then we, we all started doing him and Kodo, like made me like love doing promos. And now like, I feel like I'm more well-rounded and like next year I'm trying to like do something completely different, like be even more well-rounded, but like the group is lit in court, honestly pretty much like had the idea for everything he's dope at what he does and he's 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 always like had my back and shit like that and, and if i needed anything uh, he was there for me wow, he's a good dude. Good. oh yeah he's a good dude bro he's a good dude exactly. i don't try to message him too much you know what i'm saying i don't, I don't like when you know i'll i'll message him and stuff yeah but i but i but i do know if like if i needed something that he'd be there for me you're also the world middleweight champion so congratulations you've held the title for the entire 2020 even though there was a little break in there because of covid but yeah how, what was the reaction when you actually won the championship for yourself knowing as a wrestler that you're about to get this title but also for like the backstage and people at home nah, at first it didn't kick in i told myself i was like no you're not you're not about to get in because i feel like if i got into this mode in my head like i'm winning a belt I'd start fucking stuff up. Yeah. So I told myself, if this is any other fucking match, you got to go in here and you got to kill. So I went in there, had the match. It was just chaotic, but I was like, I'm here and I'm going to be here to the end of it. So, you know, we got through towards the end. Boom, one, two, three. My favorite moment is I knew I was winning, but like, it felt like I didn't know, like I just won. Like, because like the way the people reacted, they were like, what the fuck just happened? They were pissed. They were like, because at the whole match, they're like, fuck him up, Teddy. You fuck him. Like, you know what I mean? The whole match. So I'm like, they're like, fuck me. <laughs> and so I'm like, when I beat this dude, they're going to be pissed. So, like, they they were like, <laughs> literally jaw dropped. Like, it was my favorite moment. Like, and then half of them were like, hella excited. Like, that's fucking dope. Because they didn't, they, they thought like Teddy was just going to come in there and beat the fuck out of me and retain his belt. <laughs> Not happening. So what was like the reaction like back home for like your friends and family? Oh, bro. Uh, my mom was like really proud. Because uh, like, honestly, it took her a lot to get on the on the bandwagon, man. Like she's like, do something else. Like <laughs> <laughs> for real, bro. Just do something else, bro. You like get out of here. But they don't understand like the, the sacrifice and the grind and stuff you got to put into something you care about. And you know what I'm saying? If you put that that tiger lion like work into it is going you know what i'm saying you're going you're going to level up but if you don't then who are you you're just going to be an average wrestler you know what i mean you got to go crazy you got to sacrifice you got to move away you got to spend money you don't want to spend blah blah you know what i mean like it's literally that's all that's what it's about like people think that they're going to be getting stuff for free and yeah then you have to come off that bread, brother. Your goal was to be the best world middleweight in the world, and clearly you are because you have that championship. So yes. I'm assuming you beat Leo Rush, and when you beat Leo Rush, who do you want to defend that title up against next? Ooh, bro, I'm looking at, like, low-key or somebody. Okay. I want all the smoke, bro. <laughs> I want all the smoke. 2021, I want all the smoke. I want to face the best. Like, I got some, I got a chip on my shoulder again. The last question that we have is actually related to music, since I know you're also an artist. You have your album out called Bangers Forever. Uh, what's three dream collabs that you actually would like to have on your next album, but they all have to be wrestlers that create music as well? I got you, bro. And I'm going to make all these happen, too. All I right. want to have Chris Bay on Bangers Forever, too, next right. year. I'm going to drop it in, like, my birthday, around my birthday. Chris Bay, definitely got to have him on the actual album. Teasy, probably Teasy. And then last, bro, would definitely be Leo. Yeah, oh, hey, I, <laughs> hey, I'm going to put him, I'm going to beat him up and put him on the album. That's what I was about to say. I'm like, oh, you're going to beat him up in the ring. Put him on the album. <laughs> put him on the album. All right. I mean, if it works, it works.
I'm gonna make him talk about how he got beat up by me. <laughs> that, would, that would be a good. That would be a good line. That would be a good one. <laughs> but uh, for Why all the MLW me, fans, the top is slipping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for all the MLW fans that uh, already follow you on Twitter, well, where can the other ones follow you? Uh, in other YouTube, social media, as well. YouTube, of course. Just search my name up. I'm on there. YouTube. Uh, she said Twitter and Instagram, just the normal stuff, man. I don't, I don't go, I'm not too crazy, like even <laughs> with merch, like it's pro wrestling to you. So, thank you guys for watching the video. Really enjoying the comments down below. Make sure to tell me your favorite mind reading match. I mean, there's a lot out there. He's about to face oh, yeah. on January 6th. Make sure to watch it, MLW Kings of the Coliseum. But uh, make sure to like, comment, share, and always subscribe. And we're out. We going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh, it's like a muscle man, Malcolm. Uh, we going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh, it's like a muscle man, Malcolm. Uh, like one two three. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze.